Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben, and today is part two in our series of looking at the stronger points of the Star Wars prequels. In episode one, it was the cartoonish antics and annoying voice of Jar Jar Binks that stirred up hatred amongst fans. But George Lucas obviously listened to the feedback because he gave him much less screen time in episode two. In episode two though, the problem was the terrible dialogue and awful plot written for adolescent Anakin Skywalker. I mean, he's just creepy right from the start. My goodness, you've grown. So have you. Grown more beautiful, I mean. At every opportunity, he just drops in these stares and really obvious hints he's infatuated with Padme. Please don't look at me like that. You're exactly the way I remember you in my dreams. I mean, dude, you need to be a bit more subtle than that. Get yourself some decent chat-up lines. You look great and all, but you know what would look really good on you? Me. Well, maybe not quite like that one. And their relationship gets even more weird after Padme kind of gets bullied into dating Anakin and then doesn't leave him even after he admits to committing mass murder. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men. But the women, and the children, too. They're like animals, and I slaughtered them like animals. I think that would kind of set off alarm bells for most women, that this guy isn't really boyfriend material. And in addition, this movie also has endless large CGI animals in the background for no reason. Anyway, that's my rant out of the way. We're now going to focus on the good things. This is why the Star Wars prequels weren't really that bad, part two, Attack of the Clones. While there was some really terrible dialogue in Attack of the Clones, like the famous I don't like sand line, there was actually some clever writing too, like this scene. You wanna buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. <laughs> or this one liner that I think Hayden Christensen pulled off really well. Brave of you, boy. I would have thought you had learned your lesson. I am a slow learner. There are also some scenes that quote lines from the original trilogy, but in new situations. Remember this from The Empire Strikes Back? Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. I'll never join you! Well, we kind of hear it again here. You must join me, Obi-Wan. And together, we will destroy the Sith. I will never join you, Dooku. You also have sinister sounding lines from Palpatine. I love democracy. I love the Republic. The power you give me, I will lay down when this crisis has abated. And of course, no Star Wars movie would be complete without this. I've got a bad feeling about this. My next point is the film features great action sequences, and there are a lot of them. Starting with this speeder chase where Anakin and Obi-Wan chase an assassin around Midgar, I mean Coruscant, this gauntlet style scene in a battle droid factory, culminating in the arena battle on Geonosis, where we finally, for the first time, get to see more than one Jedi fighting in the same scene, and it's awesome. We also have some really great actors joining the cast in this movie whose performances weren't completely sabotaged by terrible writing. Christopher Lee, who played Saruman in Lord of the Rings, exchanged one Dark Lord for another and came to play Count Dooku, the disciple of Darth Sidious aka Palpatine. New Zealand actor Tamura Morrison came on board to play Jango Fett, father of Boba Fett who was in the original trilogy. He does a good job of creating tension in this scene with Obi-Wan. Your clones are very impressive. You must be very proud. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. Ever made your way as far into the interior as Coruscant? Once or twice. Recently? Possibly. And portrays a character who's probably almost as bad a father as Darth Vader. We got him! We'll just have to finish him. You also get to see his ship, Slave One, in action, which is cool because we always knew it was an awesome ship, but never really saw its full capabilities in the original trilogy. Another thing I really like is Django's hard-hitting death scene, in which Mace Windu cuts off Django's head in full view of his son, Boba. 
then realizing what he's done, the battle seems to kind of pause for a moment and Mace Windu and Count Dooku sort of take note of the graveness and tragedy of this perhaps unavoidable act. It's a good dose of reality in a movie that's otherwise all fantasy. And speaking of fantasy, we get to see a lot of force powers in Attack of the Clones. Whether it's Anakin showing off his force powers to pick up women, Yoda meditating and delivering profound insights to Mace Windu. What is it? Pain. Suffering. Death. Count Dooku flinging stuff around, or using Force Lightning, George Lucas really went to town with it. But the one thing that eclipses it all is we get to see the Jedi who is supposed to be the ultimate master in action. Up until now we've only seen Yoda sit in a chair, get piggybacked around, and use incorrect grammar. Around the survivors in Perimeter Create! And we've asked ourselves, is he really a Jedi Master? Well, at the end of Attack of the Clones, we finally get to see Yoda being a badass. With acrobatic moves at high speed, abilities like absorbing force lightning that we haven't seen any other Jedi use, he has multiple cool poses, and also delivers a killer ending line for the movie. The shroud of the dark side has fallen. Begun. The Clone War. And the ending of this movie really provides a cool setup for Revenge of the Sith. With plans for the Death Star being delivered to Palpatine, the clone army preparing for battle, and Anakin breaking Jedi rules once again. I feel the only real bad thing about this movie is the way Anakin's character was written. He's creepy towards Padme and disobedient towards his master from the very beginning. We never really get to see him as a respectable and powerful Jedi like we do in the Clone Wars TV series. I would have preferred a more subtle fall from grace and some decent chat up lines. Hey, you look totally awesome. Kind of like a female version of me. Um, yeah, moving on. It's for this reason that I think that episode one is actually a better movie. Even though it has one annoying character, he's just a supporting actor, and you can kind of get away with pretending that he doesn't exist. You can't really do that with episode two, Attack of the Clones, because it's basically a movie about Anakin. In our next episode of this series, we will be looking at Revenge of the Sith, where I think Hayden Christensen does a lot better job with the character. Guys, leave your comments and opinions about Attack of the Clones in the comments section below. Subscribe if you're new, give this video a like. Oh, and if you'd like to see a video on my personal channel about how I get some of the really cool drone shots that I use in some of the other YouTube channels and YouTube videos that I work on, I'll put a link to that uh, on the end card of this video in just a moment. You can check that out if you like. Oh, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.